Hi friends, morning. I am uh, Dr. Ashutosh Gupta. I am a consultant fetal medicine. So today we are going to talk about uh, fetal nasal bone, right? So the first window of opportunity available to us, uh, by which we can look around for the, uh, to the baby and to assess the well-being of the baby, is at 12 weeks by doing a nuchal scan or by doing a level one. <clears throat> at a 12 weeks, uh, the fetal nasal bone is a very important landmark as to so as to see that how the baby is growing and what is the risk of the Down syndrome. Right, and um, uh, we do have our own centiles, like it is standing at the fifth centile or a 2.5 centile or a 50th centile for the gestational age. So the nasal bone is bound to change depending upon the race, races that we are trying to look around for. For an Indian scenario, for Indian population, we do have our graphs and centiles available so as to suggest that it is an hypoplastic or a dysplastic, right? So the nasal bone can be an absent. We can have an absent unilateral or a bilateral absent nasal bone. We can have some sort of a dysplasia and hypoplasia. So some issues regarding the nasal bone. So whenever the whenever there are some issues regarding the nasal bone, definitely one of the major or impetus or major uh, marker is for the Down syndrome or for trisomy 21. But mind it, uh, in only 40% uh, of the Down syndrome, we can have some issues regarding the nasal bone. So meaning thereby that in 60% of the cases remaining, we can have some other issues. So the etiology uh, of the conditions affecting the nasal bone could be, they could range from environment to some drugs like phenytoin. We can have some infections like rubella. You can have some other chromosomal abnormalities apart from Down syndrome, which, can, which we can have a sex chromosomal abnormality in the tune of 10%. And then we can have some single gene disorders and then we can have some micro deletions like 1P36 deletion. We can have some other conditions which mimic and which, which might look like in Down syndrome like facies, which is called as a cholesterol metabolism defects. Uh, and the commonest uh, example is a smith lemley opitz right so probably uh, a detailed ultrasound uh, so as to see what is happening to the baby first and secondly an invasive testing is mandatory whenever we are um, uh, identifying there are some issues regarding the nasal bone to the fetus <clears throat> nipt is a very good test but it works wonderfully well when the ultrasound is absolutely normal nipt cannot identify a mosaic uh, down syndrome cannot identify robertsonian downs the sensitivity of the nipt to pick up a sex chromosomal abnormalities is usually in the in the in the range of 90 percent or so so meaning thereby that uh, NIBT being normal rules out a Down syndrome, no two doubt about it, but it doesn't look around for other, other uh, chromosomal abnormalities that we can have, right? So we can have some micro deletions. So 1P36 deletion, they can have uh, a Down syndrome like faces and it is the second most commonest micro deletion. <coughs> So meaning thereby that a detailed ultrasound so as to see for some ambiguous genitalia so as to identify some IUGR and some growth restrictions uh, that might uh, give some sight that probably we are dealing with some cholesterol metabolism defects and, uh, and definitely for these micro deletions. So whenever we are identifying that there are some issues regarding the nasal bone that needs to be investigated further up. Uh, invasive testing, whether it is a CVS or um, uh, amniocentesis is warranted along with then uh, detailed chromosomal analysis for an array is required and detailed ultrasound so as to see for other associated conditions, um, those are associated with, so they might give some insight about a cholesterol metabolism uh, defects or so, right? So uh, detailed evaluation of the baby is warranted. Thank you very much for your patient listening.